Welkom bij weer een nieuwe Coffee Met. Or Coffee With. And today we do Coffee With Phil Bars. Hi guys, how's it going? Alright? Yes, good. With you? Yeah, very well. Busy, but, but very good. Yeah, I had a busy weekend there for you. Yeah, yeah, the whole month's been yeah, busy. Yeah. The, way, the way the PDC calendar is these days, it's just relentless, but yeah. it's all good. Keeps us in work. But first of all, uh, please introduce yourself to the Dutch audience because 95, 90% of the people don't know what you're doing. So they're qu quite obvious. Uh, uh, we know what you're doing, but yeah. obviously you want to know what you're doing. Hi guys, I'm Phil Bars. I work for Live Darts on uh, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Do all their digital content. We go to all the PDC events exhibitions interview all the players staff media about what's going on in the darting world and we're just trying to give players a platform that they haven't got anywhere else that they can express themselves can can come and talk to us because they get a couple of minutes after a game on tv which isn't really enough to tell the story and get to know the player rather than just the person you see on stage and how long are you doing this job uh, Live Darts itself has been running for six, seven years, but the digital side of it, we started at the Masters last year, so about mm -hmm. 20 months. Not not too long in terms of content, we're quite a baby, yeah. but we've come a long way in a short space of time because just a relentless beast that we always want to be somewhere, we always want to do something, and there's always a story to be told. Besides that, you are everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> East tournament, everywhere, uh, 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 they're playing. Whiskey Cliff. Yeah. Everybody knows you, all the players know you, all the officers know you, know you, so uh, it looks like you um, get a real hang of it. Uh, yeah, we've got a really good relationship with mm -hmm. the PDC, the players, the management teams. Like you say, because we are at everything, people are used to us being there yeah. and we, you get to their rapport with the players and you actually become friends with the players as well and you get mm -hmm. to know their characters and if you can look at them and think, right, I'm going to leave them alone for 20 minutes, let them calm down if they've lost or you can see when players have got something to say it's just a matter of getting that information out of them yeah you have to know you have to learn to know the people yeah and the players in it massively yes how long are you doing this this job so far is, is it because you're you're the owner now or from the start you were the owner uh, i'm i'm not the owner I, I work for live darts but it was um between jay who does all the website stuff he was the one that started the concept of yeah. live darts and then i came on board to do the digital stuff so not I haven't been doing it that long, but it's just something that I've taken to because a lot of people when they see a camera or a microphone get very nervous, very scared and clam up where I'm just like, let, let, let's roll with it, let, let's do it. It doesn't phase me that there's a camera or a microphone there. And I've always been a darts fan. So I mean, the base knowledge is very good from a young age, which, mm -hmm. which obviously helps because certain sports that you can get away with not knowing too much too about much, yeah. too much about it. But darts is a very niche sport that if you don't know what you're talking about, you get found out very quickly. He would kill it. He would, would kill you. Yeah. You have to know the basics, and you have to know the history. You have to know the, the players and what they've done. The yeah, massively. Yeah. Yeah. We go, go to on, the world go championship. On. Raymond van Barneveld, final year Prizes. on the pro tour. Really, really bad. Very. Very. One final against Adrian Lewis. Not, not his best. His last world championship is the first exit out, or is it? one barney last time also as phil taylor i don't think he'll get the fairy tale that phil had because phil was still winning tournaments in his last year he was still in the top four in the world when he actually walked away a lot will depend on the draw because raymond's not seeded for it so he's going to run into someone very good early on in round one he might get lucky and get a winnable game but i think round two is as far as it goes for Raymond in his final worlds. I would say a lot will depend on the draw. It might be round one, depending on who he gets, but the likelihood is round two, he could run into someone like Glenn Durrant very early, just someone that's in a lot of good form right now. So I don't think it's going to be the fairy tale he's hoping for. I'll come back to, 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 to your, your, your work. Um, you've been all over Europe yep. last year. Um, other tournaments come favoured for you? Uh, or, or countries? Um, the match play will always be my favourite tournament. The match play? It always has and, and always will be my, my favourite my favorite tournament. It's just the mystique of the whole venue. It's been there since the very start of the PDC. Mm -hmm. the, the atmosphere at the Winter Gardens is something special. It's just iconic the way you've got the amphitheatre, the noise just stays in there. So tournament-wise, the match play will always be my favourite. But this year, Rotterdam for the Premier League 
was was special. It was spine tingling the way it was just you look out from behind the stage. <laughs> it was just a sea of orange and even before a dart was thrown they were just cheering Barmy Army like I've never heard before in my life. Michael for me is the best player in the world and for me the best player ever. But to see the ovation Barney got over Michael was, was special. So Rotterdam Premier League was, was very good and will live long in my memory as well. One thing. Um, I'm curious, you said one thing. Michael Verguren is the best player ever. Yes. Compared to Phil Taylor also? The way I put it, Phil will, Phil will always be the most successful player mm -hmm. ever, but Michael is the best player I've ever seen throw a dart. That's, that's the yeah. way I compare it to people. Phil Phil's records will not be beaten, and he elevated the game to levels we didn't think it could go to, and then Michael's gone, hold my coat, and <laughs> we, 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 we go again. Um, so yeah, Phil will always be the most successful, and his records will stand for as long as time. But in terms of player and the things I've seen them do on a board, Michael is the best player I've seen pick a dart up. Mm -hmm. okay. Back to the darts. Floor darts. Yeah. We have seen uh, many uh, Hurryward, uh, Glenn Durant, Brandon Dolan on the way back. It's different on the on the floor tournaments as years ago. It's not Michael comes, Michael wins. It's Michael out in the quarterfinals. Ian White out in the quarterfinals. We see, have seen a quarterfinal with 105 averages over the whole quarterfinals. Yeah. What make it different than years ago? I think mentality is part of it I, um, I spoke to Joe Cullen recently and he said he just can't get up for the Pro Tour events anymore he really struggles because obviously you're in an enclosed environment there's no crowd there's no noise so players have got so used to playing on a stage and the atmosphere the electricity that they really find it hard to come back down to playing then you're all on your own normal darts exactly. no crowd no, no exactly that so I think that's a big part of it for the ones that play on TV an awful lot. People like Brennan Dolan, who hasn't had the most successful time over the last three or four years. So that's all he's played. He's, like, he's almost got yeah. used to playing in that environment again. And it's it's, like, it's normal darts for him. No. And that's been the breeding ground over so long. Get your pro tour form sorted in, and things happen. Yeah. But like you say, once you're on TV, you can't play in everything anymore because the calendar is relentless. So that's why you see the likes of Michael pulling out of Pro Tours. They make sure they've got enough ranking money to qualify for everything they need to early on, and they just skip them. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong, 10,000 pounds is an awful lot of money, but it's not in terms of the TV money that they can get for a first round yeah. game now. So the Pro Tours are important for probably outside the top 10, in my opinion, but once you're in that top 10, it's it's a hard place to not necessarily it's get not, all the pro tours no anymore yeah, exactly mm -hmm. that yeah, yeah i understand what you mean last question it's different on the pro tour for all the men's mervyn king glenn durant but he is good this year what you think and beat and how long is possible to demand at this is this level at this level um i don't know because every player is different every player has a different level and a different threshold where they where they get to people like merv just love the sport and just carries on going and, and wants to play but people like michael's openly said gets to 40 years old i'm done yeah. I'm, i'm gonna walk away so a lot depends on the the individual's desire to play at the top level we go back to phil could phil play at the top level still yes i think he could but he hasn't got that desire to work hard and, and practice the way, the way he should. So Steve Beaton come out with a classic line, as long as they keep paying me, I'll keep playing. So it, it, it's, all, it's all down to, to that. We're going to see it. Phil, thanks for coming here. Not a problem, guys. Thanks very much for having me. Mensen, bedankt voor het kijken. Had even een duimpje, duimpje achter hieronder. Vergeet niet te abonneren op het YouTube-kanaal van Dutch Actueel. En dan zien we jullie bij de volgende Koffie Met.